We are one of the country's largest wholesale email marketing companies in the entire country. What we do is we work with agencies, we work with media companies and resellers solely to provide them with a white labeled email marketing solution. So 150 million, it's a big number. 150 million is the amount of hot dogs that people and Americans will eat on Independence Day. It's the number of Amazon Prime subscribers there are throughout the world. It's the number of chocolate Santa Clauses they create every single year. 150 million is also the number of consumers that we have opted into our database of people who've asked to receive third-party information from us via email. So what we could do with these emails is we could hyper-target them by over 700 different lifestyles and selects by their age, gender, geo, hobbies, income, different levels of interest, and so forth. So what we specialize in doing is driving traffic to your customers, client, or to your customers and clients' websites and storefronts to bring people for visitation, to get them into dealerships, to get them to purchase online goods and so forth. So here's how. We have three platforms. All of these platforms could be API'd and private labeled to reflect your brand, your company, so everything we do are fully behind the scenes. But this is our account system. This is where you and your team can go in. You could build your target audience profile. You could set up that hyper target audience to see how many records we have of our 150 million opted in records within seconds. We then push you over to our order management system, which again, this is the platform that your fulfillment team would utilize to input all of your campaign details. You'd upload your creative, you'd input your subject line, you'd input your from line, you could do your test seeds and live seeds directly from this platform. We could turn around a campaign in 30 minutes or less. So why is that a big deal? Because in the industry, we all know we have those clients that come to the table and say, hey, I have this last minute idea, I need to get this out, I have a last minute sale, I wanna sell some more cars this weekend, something or another. We have the ability to get your client's creative out the door in under half an hour. So it's really um, one of our specialties is these quick turnaround times because we know those last minute situations do come up. And then of course your clients want to see how those campaigns are performing. So we have our private label tracking dashboard right here. So this is a dashboard that you'll receive on every single campaign. You'll be able to see how many people viewed your email, how many people opened your email and clicked it. You'll be able to see all the analytics from the type of browser that they used, whether they opened on their mobile or desktop. It gives you a little snippet of the actual creative that you sent out to the target audience through our database. But more importantly, you can open up to a further PDF where this PDF is gonna be first and foremost white labeled for you guys. So it'll all be branded as your own. In the top left, it'll have your company logo, it'll have your brand look and feel. So when you share it with your clients, when you share it with your advertisers, it all looks like it's coming directly from you. So again, this PDF right here will show you where people were engaging with the creative in order to help optimize those a little bit later. So to conclude here, I wanted to give you guys a case study with one of our clients. We onboarded this client in Q4 of 2018. And as you can see, in their first quarter of business with us, they did $25,380. This is net revenue to them. So a brand new client, again, net revenue to them. Um, within one year's time, at the end of last year, we worked with them on sales training. We trained them on how to sell it, who to sell it to, who it works best for. And as you can see, we had a 70% increase year over year. And in Q4 of last year, this company had brought in $143,691 in net revenue. So we specialize in bringing a new revenue stream to your companies with a wholesale email marketing uh, product. And all of it's white labeled. We have APIs readily available. So if you guys have dashboards and systems already in place, we could tie directly into those systems and dashboards. And so yeah, so that's who we are with Side Impact. If you guys have any questions, want to know a little bit more, I'll be around. Our strategic team is here as well. They wanted me to wear the headbands up here today. I refuse to do so. They're in the fancy headbands uh, around today, so you can feel free to ask them questions as well. All right, thank you. Thanks a lot for your time. I really appreciate the opportunity. I'm Brian Gorman, co-founder, head of sales for iPublish Media Solutions, and we're the leader in self-service advertising. So we all know the size and the potential of the local marketing uh, marketplace. And if you watch Gordon's presentation this morning, he showed you the potential there and how it's changing. Uh, what we're going to talk about today is how you can get to them, because the challenge is getting to them and then selling to them profitably. That's the challenge. So we're all about self-service advertising, which means that you have a platform that's open 24-7, 365 days a week, and you'll be selling advertising campaigns while you sleep. But it's only, it's only going to work if you do the right things. So first of all, you have to sell what, what you know, private parties and small business people are looking for. And you're in the right place because, as you know, 
Burrell puts out a, does a survey and publishes a report and they tell you exactly what they're spending their money on. So we've been coming to Burrell for about eight years now. We've been listening and we expanded out our, our platform so that SMBs and private parties would want to buy what's available on the site. The thing that we do that's very different is we fully automate the sales and fulfillment process. And what that means is that you can offer packages at a very low price and still make a 50% profit. And I'm talking about $99 packages. We also have widened the scope so that you, if, if you're a broadcast company and you've never really tried this, there isn't any type of vertical category that you can't use our platform for. So we, we offer a, any type of a vertical category. So the typical sales workflow, as you know, is very labor intensive. There's the selling and the prospecting part of it and the closing of the sale. Then you have to build the creative, which is the second step, and then you have to fulfill it. So these are three distinct steps. A lot of times I've talked to partners, they'll have five, 10, 15 different people that are involved in a sale. Well, it's no wonder that you, can't, you have to have a minimum sale of $1,000, because if you don't, you're gonna lose money. The way we work is it's a white label solution that we work with you on how it gets set up. We create, use your business rules, your packages. Uh, when the advertiser comes to it, they pick a package. So, so we're doing two things right up front. We're prospecting, we're selling, and we're building the creative. They're gonna see a proof within a minute of them being on the site. Then once they're happy with it, they buy it. So we close the sale and then we fulfill it. We, wrote, we have automatic interfaces into, into the DSPs, into Facebook, and Google Ad Manager, uh, so that nobody touches these jobs. And when I say no one, I mean no one, unless you want to have somebody look at it before you publish it, which is probably a good idea, actually. So, oops, something happened to that slide. So um, there is a, a partner of ours, we've been doing business with them for about eight years. They came to us a little over two years ago. It's called Lead Hacks. Unfortunately, you can't see it because the slide, there's something wrong with the slide. But they wanted to target real estate agents. So, and they wanted it to be 100% digital. So we started with programmatic, uh, inter interfaced into the trade desk, and then we added Facebook. They've got 8,000 transactions sold over the last two years. They have 1,000 new agents that are using the software, and they're getting very, very good results. So we package the, the audience is automatically packaged into the, into the package itself, so that no one touches it before it goes out to the trade desk or to Facebook. So they're seeing very good click-through rates, as you can see from the slide. Now, we've just started a new program with them where we've taken it to another level. So we manage all of their data through MLS listings. When a broker puts a new listing in, in the database, we automatically generate the campaign. The broker signs up on a contract basis for either a $19 campaign or a $39 campaign. And then we retarget the reps, uh, the agents, so that they can actually see the ads running, and then they go out and upsell it. So they'll, sell, they'll purchase it for about two or four weeks. They're getting about a 30% uptake rate on, on this. Now, is this an end-all, be-all? Not at all. But if you're looking to get into a new market, you want to attract new advertisers, this is a winning solution for you because that's exactly what it does. They've done, they do about a little over $200,000 a year now, but the result has been they can send sales reps out to these people now to talk to them because they're very highly qualified prospects that upsell them. And they're doing almost a million dollars in, a, in a, a additional real estate business. So what we've done is we've widened the scope. We're, we're, we broke down the walls between classified private party and SMBs. So we'll, we would work with you to create a solutions page if you don't have one already that's linked into your website. We would link our software into that. Advertisers will come to it, they'll click. You can also have your salespeople using it for spec ads. And when the advertiser comes in, they go through that automated workflow that I've talked about. All right, so no one touches these jobs. You can sell campaigns for $99 and make a 50% net profit. And that's what LeadHacks is doing today. So let me talk a little bit more about us. Um, I was one of the co-founders. We were about 14 years in business. We're the leader in self-service advertising. We, we are considered the experts. We have almost 700 websites. We processed $200 million in ad revenue last year. And just recently in December, Legacy purchased us. And you probably know Legacy, they're the leading provider of online obituaries. And we're working with them right now because the obituary market is changing very quickly. It's no longer just grandma reading the obits at the kitchen table. I mean, it's, it's a very different market. And it's going digital. So we're gonna have a complete digital solution with a Legacy listing 
and we've, you we're using Facebook as, for targeting for obituaries. We have it live in two markets, and we're getting a 20% click-through rate on it. So if you've thought about obits, but you're not sure, come see us. I'm Brian Gorman. Thank you very much. We're right across the hall. Hope you can stop by. All right, um, so um, Sandra Sereko, I head up the uh, newly formed group for Simplify for Advanced Television and Addressable Solutions. And the reason why we, we formed this group is because we have um, just a large, um, really, uh, growth rate in terms of, as everybody is, right, in this new OTT world and addressable world. Let me tell you a little bit about our company. We're a 10-year-old company with 330 employees and growing based in Fort Worth, Texas, with offices in New York, LA, Chicago, in Atlanta, and um, we uh, probably what's most interesting to this group out of this slide is really that we run about 130,000 campaigns per month. And the reason why we have so many campaigns and are doing that is because our tech uh, was built to serve a large amount of campaigns and be able to scale with delivery, no delivery issues. And um, that's something that as I go from conference to conference, I hear about uh, transparency and delivery are, are issues that are top of mind. And um, we are a DMP that basically can ingest large amounts of data. And we offer managed service, self-service, and also a hybrid service. Um, and, and again, what's unique about us is that we're able to to serve these very local campaigns, and local to us, of course, is below DMA level, because uh, for a lot of folks, local means DMA level. But I'll get into this. So OTT, uh, it's, it's tremendous, the growth. So last year alone, we served 26,000 campaigns, but in just the last 30 days, we have served 40,000 OTT campaigns. So it's amazing that our business is just growing sixfold in this area for anybody who is a large media group and for anybody who is a direct, uh, in a direct brand or an agency. And the completion rate is 96%. So we've tied that to addressable. Um, a couple of presentations have talked about addressable and in the industry, we think about it as the two-minute set-top box, but for us, we've come at it from a different perspective. So what we have done is we have mapped the entire country and have 126 million households mapped where we can layer in 600 variables. And to help our partners, we have also created a tool because not everybody has access to an address list like you would with like a direct mail list. So in basically in a three step and 10 seconds, you can pull homes that are relevant to your target audience. And to tie that all with a bow, we have also added attribution, an attribution element so that you can follow that audience that has seen your ad at home, that user into a retail store. So for instance, this has tons of applications depending on what you're selling. For a lot of us, auto is one of our biggest categories. So for instance, you could take a Jaguar and you could serve as two households that are $150,000 plus in income, plus own a luxury car that's three years old. Then you serve that ad with cross device, so it's through mobile, into that smart TV and then track that user back to the dealership and count that as a conversion. Or you could take a pharmacy retailer and create a five mile radius around each of those pharmacies, target homes that have kids that have, that are uh, families that have kids that are five years old or less for a Pampers campaign, and then be able to show Procter & Gamble that you, in fact, have brought in how many folks from that campaign, from those households that were targeted, and report it by store, over thousands of stores. So brand safety for us is something else that we've talked about today. Uh, I think for us, we're a completely transparent platform, and we report uh, everything that we do completely transparently with 40 data points 
and even our fees are included. We break it all down, you see it. So for us, the way that we built our DMP from the beginning was transparent and was um, thinking of brand safety first. So we've been doing it even before it was a conversation in the industry. And so what I'll leave you with is that we have an omni-channel solution that's turnkey and that we use our unstructured data to reach those results. Thank you. I head up business development efforts for uh, Adcelerant, and I'm going to be talking a little bit today about actualizing ROI based on location data that's available in the marketplace. But before I do that, I just want to give an overview about who Adcelerant is. Uh, we're a digital marketing services provider and advertising technology company that works with local media companies and advertising agencies to provide them white-labeled sales enablement, execution, and reporting support for several different digital marketing platforms. We're based in Denver, Colorado. We have a team of 85 people. Everything that we do is in-house, from account management to execution, as well as software development. And that's kind of what makes us a little bit different than other service providers out there is our proprietary technology that uh, we provide all of our local media partners to help manage this aspect of their business a little bit more efficiently. We work with about 350 local media organizations and about 450 markets. And we were recently recognized as being the 83rd fastest growing company on the Inc. Magazine, Inc. 5000, and we are the only preferred programmatic solution for the local media consortium. And here are just some of the different platforms that we can help represent as your own solutions to complement your owned and operated uh, uh, capabilities from programmatic display and pre-roll video and in connected TV and OTT. We have a whole suite of location-based targeting capabilities as well as a whole suite of Google capabilities. Again, just about the whole ball of wax we can help represent as your own to local media organizations. But we've been working on platforms and capabilities to help our partners sell more of their owned and operated capabilities called location lift. So what is location lift? Location lift is determining the impact any type of campaign or any type of tactic has on producing or generating more devices seen at a brick and mortar location from one day to the next, one week to the next, one month to the next, or even from a year over year perspective. We've developed this uh, for print. So I just want to kind of give you guys an overview as, as far as how this works for foot traffic attribution or location lift for print. So an advertiser runs an ad in a print publication. That print publication then gets distributed or delivered to a physical address of a subscriber. And then we're able to determine if that subscriber physically enters that conversion zone location of that print advertiser. So how does it work? The process is the publisher provides us that subscriber database. We then match all the mobile smart devices at that physical address database of your subscribers. And then we are able to create conversion zones around those print publishers' physical brick and mortar locations and develop what we call a, a benchmark month to determine how many devices we're seeing prior to them running a campaign, and then we measure the lift in terms of how many devices we're seeing at that brick and mortar location after they've run a campaign. So how is this all working? Uh, this is leveraging a, a capability called device ID. And device ID is identifying the ID of a mobile user's device. And there's two different ways that you can ID and identify a mobile user's device. One is through a location look back, or the other is through an address match. So from a location-based targeting capability perspective, we're able to identify devices that were in a physical location in the past, as far back as six months ago, or as recently as five days ago. And we're able to do this through location services that are enabled on smartphones. Those location services are enabled to increase the and enhance uh, how, how effective those applications are for weather, for shopping, uh, for uh, travel, for uh, transportation, GPS. Those location services that you have downloaded on your mobile device are sending signals you know, to these different data providers, and those data providers are selling that data to us. And we can leverage a lot of insights from those trends, those location services that are being pinged up to the cloud. We can develop trends as to where those devices go, where, what kinds of stores are they going into, uh, what kinds of locations are they going into, and more importantly, where does that they live? So if we match your device to a, uh, a physical address location where you reside, 
you can de develop a ton of insights as to what your age range is, what your credit score is, all this information tied to those devices, and also track where those devices go after uh, we've identified them. All right, so it, once we track those devices after we identify, we can determine if they go into a physical brick and mortar location in the future. So those, that's how we're able to track these devices through uh, 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 location and location services being enabled. Now, from an address targeting perspective, it's pretty simple. You know, we've mapped out about 80% of all devices to physical address locations here in the United States. So if that uh, publisher provides us a subscriber database, we can match typically 80% of the records within that subscriber database. Right? So here's results from a, a, a foot traffic attribution for print campaign that we were able to establish for a city regional magazine that's based in Houston, Texas. They had a, a, a tourism advertiser visit San Antonio that was advertising in this Houston city regional magazine. And it, this uh, Visit San Antonio had five different locations that they wanted to drive traffic to. There was two restaurants, there was a boutique hotel, there was an art gallery, and there was a museum that they were promoting within this print ad. So what we did is we established a benchmark as to how many devices were entering those five locations in San Antonio prior to them running a campaign with this Houston City Regional Magazine. And we could see there in that benchmark month of February, we identified 39,000 devices at these five different locations, 22 of which belong to this Houston magazine, their subscribers. They ran a campaign in that month of March, and you can see we saw a lift in total devices from 39,000 to 44,000. And of those 44,000 devices, 34 of them belong to subscribers of this Houston City Regional Magazine. As a result, this Houston magazine can present to San Antonio, visit San Antonio, that print was part of that media mix that resulted in that lift of 5,000 devices from one month to the next. Therefore, establishing impact that print had on potentially driving customers to those physical address locations. So I'm confident that this is something that can be established for broadcast, radio, television, out of home, any type of digital tactic can also be measured through Lyft or the increase in number of devices that we're seeing in a location from one month to the next. And I just want to thank you guys again. I'm going to be over there in the exhibitor hall a little bit later on if you guys have any questions, want to talk about this in greater detail. Appreciate it. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm uh, Barry Miller. I am with uh, Gimbal. And if you don't know us, we are a, a location technology company, and we work with uh, media partners, including newspapers, publishers, broadcast companies, and out of home, helping them drive new revenue by partnering with us. Uh, so we thought what we'd do today is we'd uh, open up with a little video, hopefully give you a little bit of a chuckle, give you some stats on kind of the state of the state, maybe some things that you know, maybe some things that you don't know. Uh, from there, kind of try to connect the gimbal solution on how that kind of state of the state takes place and how gimbal can help you bridge that gap. Close out with a case study and actually finalize with a quick question, hopefully have you walking away saying, am I doing these things for my local advertisers? Advertising sucks. How is it that I've never seen something I would actually buy on my phone? Gimbal is re-engineering mobile marketing to help you locate and communicate with exactly who you want. We have the tools to help you organize the physical world and collect rich location data. The key is our always-on location SDK. We tell you where people go and how long they spend there. That clothing ad last night? That was us. I do love me some velour jumpers. <laughs> Let's make marketing suck less together. There we go. So some things you probably do know, you're already aware, right? The average American consumer has 3.6 devices. My father's 81 years old. He wakes up in the morning, checks his cell phone to see if his granddaughter texted him, sits on, his, sits on the couch, he opens up his laptop to see where Tom Brady is going to be playing next year. Goes out, goes out sits, in the, sits in the afternoon sun, he reads on his, uh, on his iPad, and then at night he watches TV on a connected device. So at 81 years old, he has four devices. So what that does is that causes fragmentation in the marketplace, right? It makes it difficult to reach local, consu to, to reach consumers and figure out who we're trying to target. So some things that you probably already know, right, is that in terms of like, inf in, in terms of information, we do have a wealth of information where consumers visit online, right? Uh, everything we do basically creates a digital fingerprint. 
but that does leave some, some gaps in the area, trying to fill the, fill the location on where, where folks go in their offline journey. Now some good news, folks, and this is, I think, interesting, and when we show this to our clients, their eyes definitely perk up. 91% of all commerce still takes place in the, in the physical world. So the Amazon effect, it certainly is, is, a re, is real. Consumers are certainly doing more and more um, uh, research before they go and they buy that car, that hamburger, but at the end of the day, they are still walking into the dealership 91% of the time to buy that car. So this is where the Gimbal solution really starts to bridge the gap. What Gimbal does is we have an integrated platform that links online and offline. So we build seamless advertising experiences via cross-device targeting to help, cons to help drive consumer behavior. Basically what we do is we try to help make marketing suck just a little bit less. All right, so having an idea of kind of knowing where consumers go in the physical world, it gives you and your local advertisers, it gives them better insights, better decisions, and better results. So when we talk to our local partners, right, what they tell us is that better results mean happier clients, means higher renewal rates, and it means larger deals. So if there's one thing that I'd like you to walk away thinking about Gimbal, it's that we can help you drive better results and happier clients. But for Gimbal, it first starts with the data, right? They, that video talked a little bit about the always-on SDK. So 80% of location data right now comes from the bid stream. The bid stream, if you're not aware, it's widely inaccurate, and it is also available to anyone and everyone. So it really doesn't allow you to differentiate from your competitors. Gimbal's SDK, uh, our data comes from our always-on SDK. We, ha we sit in over 2,500 leading consumer apps, apps such as Sephora, Marriott, and Citibank. This has allowed us to create a proprietary first-party data panel of over 100 million monthly active users. This is a different differentiator for you that you can deliver to your local clients. It creates a deterministic one-to-one -one, um, uh, one -one match, and it drives, again, better results. So in terms of better results, right, what we're doing is really, we're really trying to shift the, shift the story, shift, from, uh, shift away from kind of click-through rates and shifting to performance. So I really like this, um, you know, this case study with Fox Dealer. Uh, their, their CTO uh, is quoted in here, the ability to, actu to, to measure actual lot visitations based on time is an innovative solution and helps validate advertising spend. This particular campaign, we had 526 walk-ins, an average dwell time, and we can tell you the dwell time of 69 minutes, and a cost per visit of $37.07. That's extremely low in the auto space. So in conclusion, what we've, what we've determined, and, and, and our clients have told us, only 26% of data professionals claim to have a very good single view of the consumer journey. Connecting online and offline is the only way to do that. So my question to you is, what is your solution? How are you helping your local advertisers bridge that gap? Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Opsco is our company. Dick Van Helsema is uh, me. And uh, I'm about, uh, I want to start by asking you a question before I use some of my precious time. What business are you in? Sounds like a, a stupid uh, college uh, first day question, but what business are you in? Everybody would answer that saying, I'm in the ad business, I'm in the uh, maybe journalism business, I might be the marketing business, a media business, uh, you might be in this sales business, et cetera. I would just like to say from a point of view of Opsco, we see all of this business as a supply and demand business. Supply and demand, right? You, I think you get it right off the top. You don't have to waste the rest of my six minutes to, to explain all that. But the bottom line is it's not just supply and demand or supply or demand. It's the overlap of supply and demand, the intersection of supply and demand. If you had all the supply in the world, you have no business without the demand. If you have all the demand in the world, you have no business without the supply, right? Uh, stock market today is is a great example of that. Read it later, though. It's, uh, it's not the greatest news. Um, <laughs> if you take uh, the, the, the fonts on the slides uh, would normally have the revenue in the little green zone there in the middle. That was the cute play on the, uh, the stepped-up graphics. But uh, the, uh, when we sent the, the presentation in, it apparently got uh, sidetracked. So anyway, we're, in the, we're all in the supply and demand business, right? So the audience supply, 
is what the advertiser is demanding access to. If you're talking about content, the content supply is what the users and engagers want access to. If you think about this, that's everybody's business in this room. Opsco has been operating in that green zone for more than 10 years. We're a company that's owned, the ownership is legacy media executive, me, uh, a young guy, my partner, uh, James, who was a charter employee at Rubicon Project. We put the two, the legacy ops and the programmatic and ad ops together, and for 10 years we've been serving a large part of the industry. We serve, uh, uh, our services are on more than 1,000 uh, websites in the U.S. and Canada. We're currently now pointing some at Asia and other places. What we've basically done is we take ops as a capacity. Ops as a capacity and where the, the, law, where the supply and demand intersect is our area of operation. Again, the, uh, imagine these words in the green part of the screen because that would be the way it was designed, right? We, have, we, we run programmatic operations, we run platform operations, and we run and support people operations. I'm gonna talk most about programmatic today because it's the hottest, largest part of the deal, but we do operational technology sales, support, fulfillment, coaching, and uh, consulting in all three of these areas. Another great alignment problem. The, uh, I'll just give you the, the, the typical uh, logo slide. We do holding companies at the high end, broadcast companies, newspaper companies, nonprofits, including the Salt Lake Tribune, it was in the news in the last months because of their flip to uh, nonprofit status. We also have some other, uh, other or pure play media companies. So really we are dealing with people from the largest media companies in the world, in the United States I should say, all the way down to even some pure play uh, special topic bloggers, if you want to read about The Bachelor, Bachelorette down there at Reality Steve. In the programmatic ops area, I'll just say we're going to focus on programmatic with the, with the, uh, the, the, the de rigueur. Uh, every conference has this slide. They just, this is the newest version of it, sort of like Mary Meeker's uh, ecosystem slide. But essentially, programmatic transactions are responsible for 85% of transacting digital ad dollars. That doesn't mean 85% is all programmatic. There are people involved in selling and fulfilling and marketing, et cetera. But the transaction, that intersection, the friction between the supply and demand in that green zone, 85% of it is being transacted programmatically. So it's worth spending some time on. And if you're not doing it efficiently, and you're not operating your programmatic space and team or stack or sources at the highest level of efficiency, you're not making the most money off of it. So in our case, I'm gonna give you some examples and I hope this all lines up. I think the numbers will be pretty clear. We have, a couple, we have three different ways that we provide white label programmatic services to publishers all over the North America. One is called Yield Lift. It's 100% viewable adhesion units, adhesion units. They're 100% viewable, which is the highest priority for programmatic demand placed against your sites. 100% transparent revenue share to the publisher. And I'll pause just a minute. How many of you have had anyone come to you and say, I'll give you a $5 guaranteed CPM, I'll give you a $7 guaranteed CPM, or I'll give you X and Y guaranteed CPM? You certainly have had somebody do that. And, and it, it won't be us, but a lot of the people in the, in the industry will come to you and say, take my, take my product, I'll give you a $5 guaranteed CPM. Two myths about that. First of all, they're only gonna do it on a small amount of your inventory. And secondly, the only reason they're offering you this fabulous deal is because the even more fabulous deal is the 80% of the revenue they're putting in their back pocket. There are people who are buying ranches in Wyoming in this business because they're guaranteeing you $5 CPM, but they're taking 15 on the backside. So we talk transparency all the time. We came out of an ad ops and, and operations and corporate background. We will always tell the publisher exactly what the mechanics are, what the money is, and where they're making their money, and how we're going to pay them. 
The fill rate with this particular unit implementation is 100%. This is now January and February, pre-health scare world. January and February, actual aggregate CPMs that we're getting from the yield lift high visibility, high viewability adhesion unit. Yesterday, in, in uh, one of our markets in the Northwest that's at the center of some health issues that are going on today, uh, I, I won't say any more about any of the names, we hit, we, there was a $7 CPM on this unit. During the holidays, it's double this, and at peak times in the year, it's double this. But the programmatic space gives you the value, and so we provide the best tech, and the programmatic space values that. Some of the, I'm going to, each of these slides, I'll put uh, some of the clients we deal with. These are not uh, exhaustive lists. There's an active fill product that we build where we blend dozens of branded high end global exchanges in a blended programmatic uh, array of sources. But we focus this on the bottom end of your stack, bottom up. So while the uh, viewability, Units are great, and while you're focusing on the high end with your own strategy, most people forget the bottom end. This actually brings the highest tech and latest, latest and greatest technology and demand to the bottom end of your stack. Designed for bottom-up performance, it's also 100% fill rate. It's a high-volume, low-rate approach. This is not a low-volume, high-rate approach because this is all supply and demand. So the desktop and mobile CPMs you can see here. Finally, in the programmatic space, the use case we have with pre-bid. If you know what pre-bid is, I don't have to explain it. If you don't, I don't have time to explain it. So it is essentially a technology, a more advanced technology for implementing a direct and more speedy and more efficient and high yield buys, like a stock exchange model. We have a multi-bidder, single script pre-bid implementation, which is a mouthful to say, but again, if it's familiar to you, you know what I'm talking about. It minimizes your dev team's work and maximizes your revenue. In this case, it's more scarce with a higher rate. So you have a 19.2% fill rate. These are all January, February numbers. The desktop CPM is exactly that, 293, and the mobile CPM, 172. Some of these numbers may sound a little low to you, but we have always told the publisher exactly what's going on with no obfuscation, and we basically have got, gained the trust of all the publishers, and when the programmatic industry and the space is about to place great demand against your marketplace, you have to have the right tools to capture the, de and capture the deal and make the most money. I will only add, I'll finish with this. We're also one of nine global resellers of Google Ad Manager, the technology platform that Google sells. We're fully licensed support for that. Many of you in this room are, are clients of ours already in that way. We do ad manager consulting, migration, et cetera. The one thing I'll mention at the end, we, this sounds like all kinds of operational processes and technology, but we're also in the business of supporting your team. Most of our clients would tell you one of the greatest assets in working with us is that we are publishers ourselves, and we work with them on a partnership basis, not throw it over the wall kind of fulfillment basis. So we do, we do the ad manager and ad support. We do the fulfillment support. One of the key growing areas for us now is financial transaction support because programmatic is so complex that we simplify it. We work with the accounting teams for exact accruals, payments, on-time payments, reporting, et cetera, which most medium to small publishers cannot do. They don't have the staff and understanding to do it. There's a few other things we do here and a few other clients, and the, the timer wasn't working, and I think I might be at about six. All right, thanks so much. Hello, my name's Adam Burnham. I run uh, interactive sales and services for Affinity X. Um, our company has been around for almost 30 years, and many of you in the newspaper industry probably know us previously as someone that was a design and production outsourcer where you could you know, save a little money, save some efficiency, and move production work offshore. Um, that was sort of the core of our business in the early 2000s. But in around 2000, 
12, 2013, we really shifted our focus to digital revenue growth and profitable digital revenue growth. So today we're really focused on working with our partners on ways that we can help them grow revenue but do it in a very profitable way, but also you know, making sure we're staying ahead of the curve of what's going on in the marketplace. Um, just to give you a bit, sort of a large scope uh, idea of what we do, we've got about five million jobs that we do every year across all of our channels. Um, one of the things that, that I'm finding very interesting and I'll share with you briefly is, you know, we have this cross section of business sectors and the biggest ones are with marketing services companies like a, a GoDaddy or a Vistaprint and um, advertising based companies like local media. And it is interesting to see what each one of these companies wants to offer to their customers. So advertising based companies, shockingly, want to offer advertising based products. Uh, marketing services companies want to offer marketing-based products. We sort of sit in the middle of this convergence and it's we're starting to get marketing services products that we're offering to advertising companies, advertising products offering to marketing services companies. So we get this view of what's really happening in the ecosystem to develop sort of the best of breed products and solutions that we can offer in the marketplace. Um, again, focus on those jobs is really around revenue growth. So on average, the customers that we work with are seeing average campaign sizes from the digital side increase anywhere from 50 to 100%. They're seeing that in conjunction with a cost reduction. So not only are you getting a big revenue jump, but you're also seeing your costs go down in a partnership with us. Since we're global, we do work 24 seven, 365 days of the year. And pretty much any product you can imagine we offer. And I'm not gonna get into a lot of that detail because you've seen some really great people up here talking about the different things they offer. The great news is we're partnered with most of those companies already. Um, we've built a proprietary technology workflow that allows us to link to some of the best of breed partners. So as you sit here today, one of the things I'm, I'm listening to, because I've been on the media side, hearing some really cool things about OTT, location-based targeting, conversion zones. You know, I, I'm sitting here thinking if I'm you, wow, this is awesome. How do I take this back to my local markets and how am I gonna get Joe Smith, who's the local rep in market A, to really understand and evangelize the differences of all of those products. Moreover, how am I going to get him to be able to sell it to my local customer and then fulfill it? So what I wanna to talk to you today is about time. We could talk about all these different products and services, which again, you've heard a lot about, but we're focused on really bringing time back to your sales organization. How could I give you time so your salespeople could be more effective in selling in the local marketplace. So on average, we're seeing quite a bit of time savings in an, in an effort of what we call process mapping and workflow evaluation. So we're sitting down with our partners and we're saying, what is your ideal sale? So if you're a television company, you know, you're looking for linear spot sales, you're looking for OTT, CTV um, ads, you're looking for local O&O &O and maybe programmatic. So that could be an ideal sale for a TV company. So then we sit down and say, okay, let's talk about the life of the salesperson once they make that sale. What really happens to them? And you know, it's something that looks like this. It's arrows going in different directions, multiple systems. You know, you might have three different vendors that you've got to input in. You've got billing has to connect to the CRM, has to connect to the workflow, I got to do creative. So what we've created is lots of really great products and services out there but really a nightmare to try to fulfill. So some companies hire teams. I'm gonna hire an admin group. They're gonna really help me push this fulfillment. That comes with cost. So now I'm spending more money to get revenue, quite frankly, on the digital side, which comes at a lower margin than my core products, which seem easier to sell. So local reps start to say, I'm not gonna sell this. It's too much of a headache. I'm just gonna keep selling what I know. And you start to lose more share in the marketplace. So what we're helping do is to take that process break it down, we're looking at all of the systems. We all know that APIs and integrations can happen, but they're expensive. And do you wanna spend the money to do that? If you do, we're happy to help with that. If you're looking for ways around that, we're happy to help you figure that out too, whether that's a combination of people, process, or technology. But what we're doing is we're taking this complex workflow and breaking it down to something easy. And for some tangible examples, we're saving hours of time on orders. So if I could tell you, you could give every one of your salespeople a couple hours back for every order that they're processing, and you could extrapolate that over the course of a year. How much revenue could you generate? You don't need to launch 27 new products. You don't need to train them on 50 new things. You just give them back time. 
So I'll, I'll share this slide afterwards so everybody can see it, but we're saving across all the different industries, we're finding ways to save time and create efficiency in the workflow attached to all the services that we provide. Um, if you're interested in saving time, if you're interested in making a little bit more money with your top salespeople, or even your middle tier salespeople, we're here, we're happy to talk to you about that. Thank you very much. Well, listen, good afternoon. My name is Rick Rogers, Chief Revenue Officer of Town News. And on behalf of Steve Parrott, our Senior Broadcast Sales Manager, and Brad Ward, the CEO of Town News, we are extremely excited to be here and be a sponsor of Braille Miami and also be the uh, full stack content management system and digital services provider for 2,000 local media organizations throughout North America. And that is something that we're extremely, extremely proud of. Uh, also recently, we celebrated our 30th anniversary in business, and we celebrated that at the Mega Conference a few weeks ago. And while we're super uh, proud of our history, we're even more excited about the future. And what I'm gonna to talk today is about two programs that we launched two weeks ago at the Mega Conference. And we think these are two new programs that, going, that are going to have a very big effect on the industry and a great tool for our partners. And they're based around a program we launched five years ago called the IQ program. And IQ allowed our partners to be able to target programmatic advertising based on a data management platform built within the content management system. And also, it was a program that was able to do content recommendations with stories, drive more ad impressions, drive more traffic to the site. So now we're taking that same data management platform and we're gonna fix the paywall problem. How many of you are frustrated in the sign up or the paywall or the subscription process on websites, on news sites specifically? It can be a little frustrating, right? I see Nancy's hands up. Because in many cases, they're like this. It's a blunt instrument. It's a one size fits all. If you've gone through the subways in New York City, how many times have you gotten to the turnstile and it doesn't work right or your card gets stuck? It's tough to get through. We want to solve that problem at Town News and we think we've done that with IQ Audience Plus because we're going to use a data management platform to allow our local media partners to strip away that basic paywall and be able to create dynamic journeys through their site to get them to subscribe in a cleaner, more efficient fashion. We're gonna allow them to be able to target messaging based on who they are as an audience. If you're a sports lover, you should get sports-specific subscription messaging. If you're a business news uh, fan, you should be getting business news targeting messages. And we're gonna, we're gonna be able to do that with IQ Audience Plus. And the reason why we can do that is because of the IQ program that's built into the content management system and that we can build into content management systems as well. So you'll be able to do things like have a paywall that's dynamic for sports lovers only and have a totally different subscription path for political junkies. You'll be able to monetize drive-by users, which we can identify and make sure and you know, provide enough ads to, mo to monetize their view because they may never be a subscriber. But more importantly, if we can identify brand lovers, we can get them through the path quicker, more efficiently, to get them to click that all important subscribe button. There's different thresholds and settings for desktop and mobile because we know, you know obviously mobile is, is the key to, uh, to viewership. 70% of traffic at Town News is from a mobile device. We can detect ad blockers incognito mode to make sure and you know, identify those who are trying to bypass the system and protect that revenue for you. And I think this is really important. I know the LMA has launched the TV membership program. This can be used for just that, for our broadcast partners. This is a great tool to be able to identify who your members can be, get them to sign up to be members, get those email addresses, and engage with them at a different level than maybe you have before. So this is just not a newspaper tool. This is a tool for all local media. And so far, the results have been amazing. So Jackson Hole News and Guide was our beta test partner. And their growth month over month was 125% of subscribers that purchased a subscription through the website after launching IQ Audience Plus. 170% growth in that same time period with digital-only subscribers. And in many cases, we know the ROI on digital-only is much higher. And I think this may be the most important piece. 
they had a 14% growth in ad impressions. I know in many cases there's a feel that if you tighten the site down, your ad impressions could go down. That's not the case with IQ Audience Plus. We're able to preserve those ad impressions because, again, we can identify the drive-by users who may never subscribe and monetize them through our data program. The other big product we're launching is Data Insights. This is how we think you feel every day. You're inundated with data. Data's everywhere. So we've created Data Insights, which is a dashboard that brings all of the data into one environment. This is a media management dashboard that can bring data in from your CMS, from your analytics, from your, from your ad manager, separate the noise, and hopefully bring all that in together so you can have insights into how your digital media business is performing. We can set KPIs, we can help you identify trends, you can benchmark against other town news clients. We have 2,000 local media clients. There's a lot of cohort, cohort data that we can supply to see how you compare. And you can identify trends as they emerge, not after the P&L comes out, which I think is extremely important. You can see what articles are the most engaging. You can see what content producers are driving the most traffic and revenue on your site. And you can see what sources of revenue are the most effective. So two big programs at Town News launched just in the last few weeks, IQ Audience Plus and the Data Insights product. We're just across the hall. Again, my name is Rick Rogers. And thank you for all you do for local media. And let's have a great 2020. Thank you. Green Banana, we are a full service, white label, digital ad agency. Uh, this is our 12th year in business, three times on the Inc. 5000. Um, but I want to spend the next five minutes talking about kind of demystifying and, and dispelling some of the things that you're hearing in, uh, about search engine optimization, because we've been hearing it for the last 12 years. So Google does three to 400 algorithm updates a year. All right. SEOs use that to their advantage to scare you into thinking that you need to use them for search engine optimization. But I want you to think about something for a second. Three to 400 algorithm updates a year. Google's an index. Google's job is to return the most relevant search results based on the thing that you type in, right? So if Google changes that three to 400 times a year, they're going to start to mess with relevance and relevance isn't going to work anymore. Right? So how many ways can you define best burger in Coconut Grove? Right? You change it too many times, the Google search engine's not going to work. So the truth of the matter is, is that 80% of those changes that you're seeing are just trying to stop the bad guys from doing things they're not supposed to be doing. Right? The other 20% that you're seeing kind of follows the Pareto principle, the 80-20 rule, the thing that, that guarantees the universe. Right? So 20% of those changes are user experience changes, so mobile things, site speed, uh, security, all those things are going to enhance the Google experience. So right there, you automatically don't have to worry about 80% of the things that people are talking about when it comes to search engine optimization. All right, so the other thing that people do is I, I can't tell you how many times someone has called me and said, Kev, I got this email, it's got lots of red on it, it's, it's bad, we need search engine optimization, we need to have our site optimized. And we, apparently we need latent semantic indexing, right? So first of all, I have to applaud whoever came up with the phrase latent semantic indexing, because any time you use a three-syllable multisyllabic word, you automatically sound really smart. So every time I use that, people think that I'm super smart, so thank you for that. All it really means is supporting keyword phrases, right? So, so the first thing that I ask them is, is, well, what do you want your site to be optimized for? You, you said you want your site to be optimized. You're afraid of this thing that you've got with all these you know, red marks on here. And, and they say, well, 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 I'm not sure, right? Well, what do you mean, right? So in order to get your page ranked in a Google search, you have to define what you want to be optimized for. So optimizing your site for the sake of optimization is like saying, I want to be better. So better to me would be taller, better to me would be faster, better to me would be not sweating while I'm doing a presentation, right? That, that's better, so it's too subjective. You have to figure out what you want to rank for. So what do you do, where do you do it, what do you sell, and where do you sell it, right? If you're ranking on page one for those terms and you Google them, you don't need search engine optimization. You just have to figure out how you got there and keep doing it, right? If you're not, now you have a goal to set, to get ranked for, right? 
So once you have that in mind, then you have to build a structure and a plan around it. Now my favorite site in the world for SEO is Wikipedia, because Wikipedia ranks page one number one for almost every noun, verb, and adjective. They rank page one number one for the word basketball. They're outranking the NBA, because they're not selling you anything. They're not talking about tickets, they're not talking about events, they're just talking about the word basketball. And if you read that page, that page is just defined about the word basketball. It's got, it's got latent semantic indexing, phrases that support the word basketball, where, where basketball was started, who made the first basketball, the town that basketball originated in. But then it also has all these beautifully synced pages that will go and talk about, well, Here's where basketball was originated, and then you can click on that page and then find out who founded that town, right? Another way to talk about this is there's this crazy American author named A.J. Jacobs that writes these books where one time he read the Encyclopedia Britannica and decided to write about it. Another time he read the Bible from cover to cover and decided to act it out where he was actually throwing pebbles at adulterers, and I just didn't pick you at random, I, I promise, right? So, so then he decided to go and thank everybody that contributed to his cup of coffee, right? And in order for him to do that, right, so if, if, he, if he built a website off of this, I guarantee you he would be page one number one for coffee, because in order for him to thank everybody for contributing to his cup of coffee, he had to thank the people that fixed the machines in, in Guatemala that picked the beans. He had to thank the dude that, that took the cup and made the perfect smell and liquid come in so he could have the perfect experience. He had to thank the guys that painted the lines on the road in Manhattan so that his truck could actually make it to, to deliver the coffee there. So if you think about that, that is the perfect structure for search engine optimization, all right? So now you don't have to worry about that anymore. That is how search engine optimization works. I got 30 seconds, so Green Banana is a full service digital ad agency. What makes us unique about SEO is we're page one and you don't pay. If we don't get you ranked on page one, don't pay us. If you lose your rankings, don't pay us. Our big secret is there's no secrets. Um, the, we, you know, uh, we do AdWords, display, um, social. We are in the other room. You don't need to see any of these other pages because they're just sell stuff, right? So if anybody needs to talk to me, um, we're in there. And if you want to go to igestmetkevin.com, that takes you to my page if you have any questions. Thank you.